Thank you to Steve and to Ginger, and especially you, Ginger, for sharing your story, uh, to the community partnerships, and to the families that shared their stories. Thank you for having the courage to do that. I know how hard it is to share something so intimate and personal, but uh, we need to hear those stories. And I usually say that I'm not going to belabor the issue, but today I have to belabor it because it has been a tremendous oversight. I will thank you, as uh, Representative Santiago did, for bringing up the fact that we have been left out. Um, Hilda said the 70s and the 80s. I can remember this going on in my community growing up as a kid in the 60s. And it, it's just really disheartening that in 2018 that we still have to have this tone of voice around this kind of table. And the thing that really struck me when I walked in was the representation that I see around the circle. And it led me just to look up some information. I pulled up a website. It was the Connecticut Opioid Crisis for 2017. And it's an interactive map of the deaths by town. And when I looked at it, the towns that lost the most residents to fatal overdoses were, and I'm, and I'm calling them in order, Hartford, 30, New Britain, 25, Waterbury, 24, Bridgeport, 22, Norwich, 19. And then they gave a breakout of towns by population of over more than 10,000. And they went Nor Norwich, Torrington, New London, New Britain, and Newington. And then they went on to give the breakout by overdose in the town and then the actual residents killed. And going down the line, I'm looking from the most, starting at 42 in Hartford, overdose, residents killed out of those 42 were 30. We go from Hartford to Waterbury, Bridgeport, New Britain, New Haven, Norwich, Meriden. I'm, I'm hoping you're getting a picture here. And the numbers are decreasing as we go down. East Hartford, 10, Danbury, 9, Branford, 7, Milford, 7, Groton, 7, Norwalk, 6, Hamden, which is one of my towns, 5, um, and Sonia, four, Seymour, four, Watertown, four, East Haven, three, Weathersfield, three, Avon, two, Trumbull, two. I hope you're kind of getting the drift of where I'm going with this. And I just don't see the representation around the table of the cities and the towns that have been most impacted by this crisis. And I want us to take notice of that, and I really want us to make an earnest effort in spirit and in truth to change the narrative, to make sure that we don't get left behind again, because this is not the first epidemic to hit the US that initially impacted communities of color. And I think it's a terrible disservice to communities of color to now want to disassociate and, and, and it's not criminal anymore. It's a mental health issue after I don't even know how many people of color have been sent to prison for being victims. Victims. That has not changed. When it was happening in black and brown communities, they were victims. It's happening in white communities, they are victims. Everyone is a victim. But we haven't been treated like that. And I just wanted to, to lend my voice to that because I hear this when I go back to my communities. You know, you said they wanted to know when you were knocking doors, what were you gonna do about it? Well, I hear the same thing. And this is not the only thing that we get left out of. So I just wanna drive home the point that we really need to make sure that when we are addressing these issues, that we are doing it equitably and that we are doing it in, in a way that is fair to everyone because I don't think no one life is more precious than the other. My heart went out listening to that young lady and you. You know, that story touched me in a very intimate place. I've been there, I've made those visits. I haven't lost, you know, my loved one to the addiction and had to go through the things that you went through. But we have a lot of things in common. I, I just want us to understand that we have more in common than we, we have differences. 
and that we have got to start seeing these issues past the color of people's skin. And I just want to, I just can't say that enough because it is very hard, you know, for me to sit in these circles and come into these conversations and a lot of times maintain composure. And I don't mean as the angry black woman. I mean as the woman that wants to melt and break down in tears because I know what I've been through and what I've seen people in my community go through and nobody has uttered a word. Nobody has fought for us. Nobody has cared. And I just think that it's long past due time that people start caring about people in general and not according to your zip code, where you live, or you know all the other things that we get judged on. And I hope that this is the beginning of that because it is long overdue. So I really do salute you, Steve and Ginger, for bringing this to the forefront but this is not the first time for us. This is not an, an, an a new epidemic for us. And to hear it coined as that is very offensive because this is nothing new. This is deja vu in my community. So I thank each and every one of you for being here. I thank you for, for caring. I want you to stretch that caring past the communities that don't, <laughs> that stretch it past the communities of, um, suburban America and actually embrace the fact that this is not only happening, this has been happening for decades. I'm talking at least 50 years in my community. Thank you.